I took my family to a movie last week. I want to stay consistent with my history of making bad financial decisions. <laughs> took them to a movie, it cost us 60 bucks to get in the door. That's before the snack bar and those Whopper deals you get there. Kids are like, Daddy, we want something from the snack bar. I'm like, I don't go get some, I don't care. Daddy will figure something out. Huh? I'll start throwing papers or something. Huh? Folks, I bought a box of goobers for $4 at the movie. Four bucks for a box of goobers? I did the math, that's 23 cents a goober. <laughs> Guess you are what you eat. That's the deal there. But that wasn't the bad part. The bad part was when I got my drink. I wanted to get a 44 ounce, you know, soda. You know, that's a large. So I said to the kid, I said, give me the 44 ounce soda, five bucks. You know, five bucks, that's, get a deal like that, you usually gotta go to Disney World. <laughs> And I am Mr. Frugal. But I ordered 44 ounce soda and it goes, sir, I'm the kid the ground. Sir, um, you can get for 25 cents more. Uh, you could get a 64 ounce soda and it's free refills. <laughs> See, some of you know where I'm going with it. I'm gonna make a cultural statement right now. If you're drinking 64 ounces of soda and you need a refill, <laughs> cling clang, hear ye, hear ye, you're drinking too much soda. <laughs> Quit while you still have a pancreas, man. <laughs> if you can't palm your drink, you need to get a smaller drink. <laughs> oh, I'm thir me a straw, okay. <laughs> that is too much. Yeah. I'm not telling you what to do, folks. Don't you hate that when people tell you what to do with your life? When you get my age, it's just like, my brother's like, dude, man, look at you. You're pasty, man. You're like, flabby. He goes, you need to work on your core. <laughs> My what? Your core. I'm like, what, am I an apple? <laughs> I got seeds in there somewhere? I didn't know I had a core. It's like, no, man, you got to work. You got to do crunches every day. You got to do your crunches. I did crunches for two weeks straight. Didn't help me. Those Nestle crunches, delicious. <laughs> Didn't help a bit. Mm. And my kids, I love the name of the home gyms that they have. My kids bought me an ab lounge. What are we gonna do? Ab lounge, what are we, either one. It works, I'm up to three naps a day. It's really, really working out well. I wanna get the bicep hammock. Use my lazy boy recliner for tricep extensions. Yeah. On the burn. And then my friend comes up to me, he goes, dude, you gotta do Thai bear. You gotta do Thai bear. Oh, my friends talk like that. Thai bear. <laughs> I don't know. You gotta do Thai bear. And I said, like, what's Thai bear? He goes, man, Thai bear is like martial arts and aerobics put together. It's awesome. I'm like, dude, what's so great about Taibo? He goes, man, really, since I started taking Taibo, I feel like I can defend myself in a fight. Imagine fighting some guy doing Taibo. Like, bring it on, dude. Come on. You picked the wrong guy. <laughs> They'll run away. He's doing Tybo. Get him away. <laughs> yes, you did. I think I pulled a muscle when I did that. <laughs> Tybo. But I don't know. I just can't help myself. I just love to eat. Love it. Mm. 
I come up here and you have these white castles. Oh. Talk about a house of worship. That is a wonderful place. I know says, why is going into White Castle always a good idea? Coming out of White Castle is such a bad idea. Why is that? You ever walk out of there, what did we do that for? Is there a live animal in my stomach? What's in there? You drive, dude, I can't make a fist. What am I chewing on? Is that an onion? It's a gummy bear. How'd that get in there? You do some Taiba. But it's great when you go to White Castle. Oh, I'm singing songs to that place. Like I'm dreaming of some White Castles. Just like the ones I used to know. Where the beef is steaming. It gets me dreaming. My indigestion starts to grow. I really dig those gut bombers. They're not low fat, but I don't care. I'll be blowing onions in the air. <laughs> and blowing out my brand new underwear. <laughs> oh, man. Then you leave the White Castle, gotta go to Krispy Kreme. Do they have Krispy Kreme donuts here? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't care if they can't spell Krispy or cream. That place is the place. You've had Krispy Kremes. Oh, those are wonderful, aren't they? It's like eating a baby angel right there. I don't even know what that joke means, but you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. In my, in my town, they have the Krispy Kreme store where you can go and you can watch those Krispy Kremes being made. Uh-uh. God is so good, <laughs> that one is mine. See, that's my dream. When I'm 40, I want to go to Krispy Kreme, lay on that conveyor belt when it goes under that icing part. <laughs> Just get a full body glaze. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I can afford it. I'll pay for it. <laughs> the old body glaze. See, that's a problem. When you're almost 40, you can't really eat anything anymore. My wife is like, you know, nothing. Can't drink real soda anymore. Got to drink diet. Mmm. <laughs> Anybody here remember the first diet soda? Tab. Tab. It was like carbonated epicac. You remember Tab? <laughs> sure, it's easy to lose weight when you're dry heaving all the time. <laughs> like, how's your Tab? It's great. <laughs> I've lost 30 pounds. And my purpose of living. <laughs> and the feeling in my legs. <laughs> I cannot eat anything real anymore. Can't eat real eggs, mm-mm. Gotta eat egg substitutes, which freaks me out. Where are they getting those things? <laughs> what kind of chickens are popping up those little, little bad boys? <laughs> oh, that's an egg substitute. It's got a plastic shell. Look at that thing. <laughs> Take it to room B. Can't drink regular milk anymore. Gotta drink rice milk. <laughs> yeah, uh, rice milk. How are they getting that? I guess you gotta have real small fingers. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna do it till some of you get this joke. I'm milking a piece of rice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you come back in a year, we'll have you a cup. Rice milk, and the worst is I can't eat bacon anymore. Can't eat, I love bacon. I put bacon in my cereal. <laughs> my wife's like, I'll get you some bacon. I'll go to the organic store and get you some bacon. She goes to the organic store, she brings back this stuff called turkey bacon. Turkey bacon. How is that possible? 
Are the turkeys and the pigs shacking up now or something? <laughs> what is going down on the farm, folks? <laughs> gobble, gobble, oink, oink. I don't think so. I'm open-minded, but that ain't Christian right there. That ain't right. <laughs> it's horrible. And that turkey bacon just lays flat when you cook it. That ain't right. Bacon's supposed to crinkle up when you cook it. it just lays flat. It's like eating a meat-flavored fruit roll-up or something. <laughs> All right, let me think where I'm gonna go next with you people. No, that's it. I, mean, I know. See, the thing is, is I love candy too much. It's just, it's hard to resist, you know? That's why I love Halloween. Anybody here do Halloween? Oh, okay. It's just about getting candy, isn't it? Trick, trick or treating is just about getting candy, the good candy, not the bad candy. Do you remember getting bad candy when you went trick or treating? Like homemade popcorn balls. You ever get those? <laughs> Why don't you eat it? You remember wax lips? Anybody ever get wax lips? Wasn't that a treat? We'd eat that stuff. Your friend's like, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> what's it taste like? It has no flavor whatsoever. <laughs> it's just getting bigger as I chew it. <laughs> Give me the Heimlich. Come here. <laughs> you guys remember those wax bottles we used to have with that liquid? What was that? Transmission fluid in there? What was that? Just bring them, knock them down. Just keep them coming. No wonder we have health problems later in life. We're drinking battery acid out of wax bottles. <laughs> oh, the worst candy, though, was that uh, brown taffy in the orange wrapper. Uh, it tasted like peanut butter and hair. You remember that? <laughs> And you ate it, you're like, oh. <laughs> Why am I eating this? Because your dad ate all the good candy. That's why you're eating that stuff. You didn't have a choice. Anybody here have a dad that cleaned him out of all the good candy when you brought it home? Wasn't that great? You come down, you take off your costume, come down, he's in a sugar coma down on the couch. <laughs> Got like Twix wrappers all over his body. <laughs> Jolly Rancher stuck in his hair. Like, I wonder who did that. Bring the brown taffy. I guess I'll have to eat that. <laughs> Bad candy. I hated trick or treating. I hated it. Because we lived in an older neighborhood. And my mom would take me trick or treating in our neighborhood. And older folks. Now, older folks are nice. They just don't know what candy is. You know what I'm saying? I used to get like. Hallsmith, the lippus drops, and <laughs> bullion cubes, and sucrets, and those little red dental tablets you used to have to chew to see where you didn't brush. <laughs> Stained your teeth red for like a year. Looks like you got punched in the mouth. They didn't know what candy was, and I just get this bag full of stuff. I'm like, Mommy, what is this? What is this? My mom would always say the same thing. What do you say? What do you say tonight, lady? You messed up! <laughs> you need to get a clue, woman! <laughs> Green beans ain't candy, okay? <laughs> I hated Halloween. But you know what the worst part about my Halloweens were? Is that uh, I was a middle classer, so we didn't get the nice plastic pumpkins. Plastic pumpkin. <laughs> Anybody here have to use your dad's old smelly pillowcase to collect candy? Wasn't that a treat? It's like bing bong, just put something in the bag. I don't know what that smell is. It's like aqua velva and something. I don't know. It's like Old Spice mixed with an armpit. I don't know. 
<laughs> That's what my dad smelled like. I don't care if I offended you. Old Spice in an armpit. It's kind of disgusting, but kind of comforting. <laughs> Old man. You know, Halloween. Halloween. Oh, where are we at? People always ask me where I get my material from. Where do you get your stuff? Huh? Say something funny. You're a comedian, say something funny. No other profession deals with that, you know? You're a doctor, take out my appendix. Right now. You're a realtor, come over when I'm not ready. You're a lawyer? Get over here. Kids have fit sometimes, don't they? They just do. I mean, uh, I got four kids. I'm just used to it. We're, we're broke. Let me be honest with you. Can't save money with kids, can you? This summer, I bought a $5 slip and slide for them. Got an $800 water bill. <laughs> don't you love it how reality smacks you in the face every once in a while? But they get what they want. I don't see what kids, the kids, I don't see. I hear a lot of whining. Anybody here got kids that whine at all? Okay, you bunch of liars. <laughs> and I look at kids like, what do you have to whine about? What? No, right, nothing, nothing. But my kids will find stuff to whine about, you know? This iPod only gets 25,000 songs. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous, man. I need more gig 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 gig. <laughs> More what? G -g 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 -g. <laughs> Shoot, man. My daughter says, I don't know, the iPod's too big, Daddy. It's just too cumbersome. <laughs> iPod is too cumbersome. <laughs> Anybody here remember jogging with a Walkman cassette player? <laughs> remember those days? All right, let's go for a run. Okay. <laughs> Then you got the portable CD player, you had to run real smooth so it wouldn't skip. Oh. <laughs> Take it easy. I got Olivia Newton-John in this bad boy. <laughs> you remember that stuff? iPods, man. Oh. 25, you guys remember eight track tapes? Anybody in here? Yeah, you're from Ohio. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You remember eight tracks? They were horrible. You're lucky to get five songs on one of them things. And the tape would always break. Remember cassettes and eight tracks? The tape would always break. Couldn't go download another one. Didn't have any money. You had to fix it. But you could fix those eight tracks, couldn't you? Little piece of tape. Just kind of splice it. You were back in business. <laughs> Of course, it always had that warble in it now, since you fixed it, yeah. It's like, if you leave me now, you'll take away the biggest thing I have for me. you'd get used to it, you remember that? Then you'd hear the song on the radio, and you're like, that must be the new version. <laughs> Good old iPod, yeah. My kids make up stuff to whine about. That's just what drives me crazy. They'll invent things. The other day I made my kids a full balance breakfast. You know, on the side of the cereal box has the full balance bread. I did that. <laughs> Took me like two hours. <laughs> made that. I'm like, kids, come eat you some breakfast. Daddy made you breakfast. So they go in and eat. I go into my office. A minute later, I hear this. Ah! <laughs> I run in. What's going on? What's wrong? There's pulp in the orange juice. <laughs> Oh my 
gosh. Did I miss a meeting or something? When was there a pulp choice? Like, Hon, if you don't want pulp, scoop it out yourself! Uh, I swear pulp is like kryptonite to my kids, you know? When I want to be alone, I go in my office, put pulp around the door. You go, Daddy, shit! <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. Here's another example of whining. I took my kids to this theme park called Six Flags. Anybody heard of that? It's this theme park, really fun. Took them there, I spent half a grand in a day. Half a grand in a day. And we're driving home that night in the van, I hear this in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, what seems to be the problem, sweetie? Mm, Billy's daddy took them to Disney World this week for a whole week. And we just got to go to Six Flags. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Look at daddy. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands, because I cannot do this on my own. You ever just think about doing that? Like, let's just see what happens. We're insured. Let's just go for it. But how ungrateful is that, really? Disney World. I say we make a new theme park. We'll call it Third World. <laughs> Send them there for a couple weeks, see if they don't come back a little more grateful. <laughs> Take them to Third World. Daddy, I want a Happy Meal. You'll be happy to get a meal, son. Keep walking. <laughs> Daddy, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. No, that's a missionary and seven pygmies. Come on, keep moving. <laughs> Daddy, Mickey Mouse. No, that's a giant rat. Rat! <laughs> He's gonna eat you. I mean, you love your kids, though, you do, but sometimes, you know, you just, I don't know. The other day we were driving, we saw this Holiday Inn, the sign outside says, kids stay free on weekends. Y'all just finish the joke in your own head right there, if you uh, would be so kind. <laughs> we got them on Monday. They were fine. They were fine. Four kids. My wife is just amazing, and I, she's, uh, she's been uh, is battling a winning fight. She's thriving with breast cancer right now, and I know this is going to be on the video, and I don't mean to brag, drag you down, but pray for her. Her name is Heather, and she's doing really good, and uh, it's just been a weird year, but... And we want it to be over with, but it's, it's good. It's going really well, and she's going to make it. She's going to be great. So if you would keep her in your prayers. You know, and some of you here tonight, I don't know. I think you were here for a reason. I think that uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know. <laughs> but I guarantee there's at least one person here tonight that needed to be here. You know, it's good to cut loose and have fun every once in a while because life isn't, you know, life is tough. It stinks sometimes, but, uh, you know, it's good to hang out and, and let loose every once in a while. But uh, I don't know, people, you know, where do you get m your material? It's just really simple. It's simple. People are just goofy. <laughs> it's like every time my wife was pregnant, expect, almost ready to give birth, you know, people would come up to her, women would come up to her and tell her what the child was going to be, like they knew. They'd come like, oh, you're going to have a boy. Well, how do you know? Well... You're carrying in the front. <laughs> I'm no doctor. Where else is she going to carry that thing? <laughs> Back on her calf? 
It's a girl. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> and a boy. Oh, I don't mean to judge people, but some parents, it's like they, they pre-parent their kids. The kid's not even born yet, and they're already trying to parent the kid. You know, these people who read to their children in the womb? You know, they sit there, once upon a time, there were three bears. Papa bear, mama bear, and baby bear. Come on. The kid's in fluid. What he probably hears is, once upon a time, there were three bears. <laughs> Tommy Bear, Mama Bear, and Yogi Bear, for his Wednesday party talk, they said, this is too tough. The kid's like, is my mom Charlie Brown's teacher? How'd I get stuck with this? The hell, baby. The end. <laughs> How about these parents who like play music for their kids in the womb? What's that? Music for your kids in the womb? Like the kids going, yeah. I'd snap if I had fingers yet. See, that's the cool thing about it, being a baby in the womb. You get a new body part every day. You dance around and, oh. 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 How many of these am I going to get? <laughs> Little babies. Yeah, most babies are cute. Some babies, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> you don't judge me. You know what I'm talking about. They turn out fine, but come on. And you're like, hey. You don't want to lie to the parents standing around you. Hey, <laughs> it's a baby. <laughs> Looks just like you. All right. <laughs> I didn't know you can get a wart that early in life. But uh, you know, I talked about GPS and technology. I think the, be the best technology I saw it was with the babies. It was with our children. The, the ultrasound, you all know what ultrasound is, is where you can you know, do the sound waves and it you know, gives you pictures of the child, and it's just awesome. And the weirdest thing was that each ch child that we had in the ultrasound, what they did in the ultrasound, that's what they did when they were born. Isn't that wild? Like my first child, my son, in the ultrasound, he was like, when he was born, he did that a lot. My second child, my daughter, you know, in the ultrasound, she was like, hmm. So when she was born, she took a lot of naps. Then my third child was born, my son, ultrasound, he was like, <laughs> So he has allergies. That's his. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Oh, wait. Hey, I'm going to do a couple songs. Can I do a couple songs and we'll be done here? <laughs> this is fun, man. I think I enjoyed this time better than the last time I was here. I'll tell you the truth. You guys. Unbelievable. I mean, last time I was here, it just, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't that, you know. People just didn't get what I was doing, I don't think. You're just kind of dumb, you know? You were there, you remember that, sir? It was horrible. It was kind of a blank look on everyone's face. <laughs> I listen to a lot of music, but I get bored with it a lot. A lot of songs are too long, you know what I'm talking about? You've been in the car and you're like, oh gosh, finish. We understand what you're saying. I get it. You're Fergalicious. Good for you. 
Yay. <laughs> Chapter three. Okay. <laughs> a lot of songs are too long. I think, I think some songs should be one verse. Just one verse. Like, remember Kenny Rogers' song, The Gambler? Okay, that was a question. Y'all have radios where you come from? <laughs> Here's Kenny Rogers' song, The Gambler, in one verse right here. On a warm summer's evening, I met a man who played cards well, but he died at the table, and I won all of his money. <laughs> Thank you. Not very funny, but true. I think uh, the longest song in history was a song called The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by a guy named Gordon Lightfoot. And uh, it was like 98 verses. I'm going to try the unthinkable. I'm going to do The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald in one verse for you. Here we go. Ready? The story lives on how the boat she went down and the people all died. Bummer. 